fire away. TJ, what's that, what's that mean to you? When it was, what, the fourth time, I think? Uh, anytime um, my peers see the amount of work that I'm putting in and um, show that they have respect for what I'm trying to do, it's super gratifying because that's all you want at the end of the day is to have respect to the people that you work with day in and day out and uh, just continually trying to get better on and off the field as a leader um, to try to help this team in any way I possibly can. And um, I'd be lying if I told you this didn't mean something to me. It um, doesn't matter how many times it is. Each and every year I'm trying to find ways where I can get better and improve. And uh, I don't take this honor lightly at all. TJ, you seemed uh, happier about Herbig's play than Herbig in Seattle. <laughs> I, well, uh, I just know how that stuff is. Thinking about that, it's, know, it's yeah, it's funny because like after the fact, we talk about it, and it's those, those like first big plays of your career for those first couple years. I've talked about it a lot. Is you black out, you don't really know what's going on. You're just so excited. You have so much emotion. So I was just trying to coach him through the moment. Hey, let's hit the handshake real quick. Let's have some fun. And then he was just kind of running over. And I was like, all the cameras are over here. Let's go over here. And I was kind of like, just like walking him through like the process of the whole thing. And uh, he actually said he blacked out. Yeah, he, he definitely did. He didn't, he, he wasn't home, but uh, it, it's, it's a euphoric feeling. It really is. Cause it's, uh, you know how much work he's put in, how many, I mean, you guys see all the reps we put in before or after practice. And that goes for all the outside linebackers and all the edge rushers here. And, um, when that feeling pays off and you get home and you're able to make a huge play, um, it's, it's an addictive feeling. And I'm glad that he got a taste of it and he can continue to strive to do that more for us. It's a little bit more meaningful to you given your pre-existing uh, internet relationship? I, I think it just means more. It, it just means a lot when anybody makes a play, but more specifically a guy in our room because I see the amount of work and I see all the things behind the scenes that go into those big plays. None of that stuff is just happens by chance. There's so many reps that go into that and, and make those plays that when you get that opportunity, uh, you seize the moment. And uh, it was a hell of a play on his part. TJ, do you enjoy that part of your of your role, your leadership now, being able to? that with the younger guys and show them the ropes. Yeah, I do. And uh, like I told you guys earlier in the year, I'm, I'm able to live in the moment more and be present. And I don't have those blackout moments. I'm able to actually enjoy things and um, slow the, slow things down and realize in the moment how special they are. And um, things like that was, was, is just a fun moment in my career that I'll remember forever. TJ, given how close you guys are, is there any um, greater sense of desperation on your part? You've talked about this before. You've never won a playoff game. I know you want to get in there. Mm -hmm. Sense that even more so. I know you don't control everything. No, I think the biggest message this week is to just focus on us in this game. It's been in a situation so many times that you can't afford to look at all the we need this to happen, we need that to happen. Because at the end of the day, if we don't take care of our business, uh, I know it sounds so cliche, but it, it really doesn't matter. So at the end of the day, we just need to make sure that everybody in this locker room understands the importance of this game and taking care of our business first and foremost. Along those lines for you guys who are the pass rushers, I mean, uh, that Herbig play is a pretty good example. You guys felt like won a lot of battles and created pressure, mm -hmm. but getting them to the ground was a challenge. Uh, how big of an issue is that this week, whether it's Jackson, Huntley, whoever, a quarterback for Baltimore? Yeah, it's, it's a tough challenge. It seems like every week there's just so many mobile quarterbacks in the NFL, and um, you either have a smaller, quick guy, or you have a big guy like Geno who can also move and make things difficult from last week. But... Um, I feel like we've been producing pressure. It's just this year we haven't had that six or seven sack game like we were just talking about um, at practice this week. But it's going to be another challenge this week um, with a mobile quarterback, whether um, Lamar plays or not. Um, it's going to be a challenge for us and uh, it's something that I think we're up for. And then you guys are sticking with Mason. Obviously, he's on the, the other side of the ball. But how much of a spark is he just giving this entire team with the way he's playing right now? Uh, it's been great to see the offense move the ball. And like we've said, the really good defense has spent a lot of time on the sidelines. And I think it was like 50 some plays this week and uh, not a whole bunch the week before. So anytime we can spend a lot of time on the bench, it helps us, especially late in games for those big time moments. And uh, just really exciting seeing the offense be able to move the ball, see guys making plays. And um, like I said about our defense and stuff, I see how much they work. So it's, it's awesome to see the hard work pay off. How much has health played a role and what you've been able to do, and what have you been able to do to ensure that you've been on the field every game this year? Uh, I think luck is a huge factor of it, first and foremost. Um, secondly, I've done a good job of uh, just learning from my mistakes and my successes from 
staying healthy and keeping healthy and talking to many guys that have done it before and not being too stubborn, I think, is a big thing of um, learning and trusting my body and what works best for me. And uh, I think all those things are kind of self-reflective over the years of I'm not 24 years old anymore. I don't need to take every single rep and go 100% and practice every single week. But I do need to find out what works best for me as far as a focus and mental preparation standpoint. And I feel like I found a good groove. But I'd be lying to you if I said luck wasn't a factor of it for sure. Did you just, like I guess feel terrible that you need help from other teams, or are you guys grateful that there's an opportunity here at Week 18? How do you feel? <laughs> no feeling. Um, obviously, you'd like to get in on our own um, with not needing help, but at the same time, um, I'm not going to feel sorry for ourselves for being in this position. Uh, we just need to take care of our business. We've been in this position before, and like I said, if we don't take care of our business, none of it matters anyways. TJ, I know you got banged up against Seattle. Just what was the injury do you anticipate it impacting your availability for Saturday? Oh, I'll be ready to go for Saturday, no worries. TJ was pretty bleak after the, the Colts game. I mean, what do you attribute sort of this resilience that you guys have been shown the last couple of weeks? Uh, Mike Tomlin. Uh, I've said all along my whole career here, um, never too high, never too low, always consistent. Uh, the team meetings are incredible. Everybody, I wish they had the chance to sit in those team meetings. And um, I think it's just him giving a great message to us and us running with it and guys having true belief in this locker room and the guys in it. And there's been a lot of outside noise, but at the end of the day, the guys have been working off and um, trusting in each other, and it doesn't matter how depleted we are. We understand that's happening all over the league, but if we want to win games, it's going to take the guys in this building, and, and um, we've really taken and run with it, and I think none of that's possible without Mike T at the helm. With a week as big as this, how do you make sure a lot of those younger guys on the team that haven't been here before, haven't done this yet, make sure that they keep that mentality, you know, not getting too high while also not getting too low? Yeah, it's a good mix of through actions and through talking. Um, I'm big on not drowning out my, my voice by talking too much and trying to show through example. Um, that's a way of doing it. And um, I mean, I think it's just been a, a thing this whole season with a lot of new guys, um, whether you're a, a young guy or you're coming from a different organization, um, kind of all about our rivalries and traditions here. And then also in these spots where some of us older guys have been in this position before, where we can teach and uh, tell those young guys what it means to be in this position, how important it is to focus on this game and not look at everything outside. TJ, in regard to Mason and the way the offense has been performing, Cam was saying the other day that it actually allows the defense a little bit more room for error. Do you feel that, the sense that at all when you're playing? And okay, you know, the offense takes some of that burden away from you guys maybe? I don't know. I, I never play like that. I just kind of play as hard as I possibly can whenever I'm out there. I'm never really thinking about the negative side of things probably gets me in trouble at times, but it's all right. TJ, I know you've only played for Mike, but do you hear from other guys that it, it, is, a diff it is different in other organizations as far as how Mike handles meetings and handles situations like this? Uh, you hear bits and pieces, and obviously I've had brothers who have been in different places, and um, I just I, I feel like I truly understand how fortunate I am in this um, line of work to have a leader like him at the helm. and. Um, don't take it for granted, and uh, definitely a lot of life lessons and a lot of football lessons learned in those meetings. TJ, you're still depleted on defense, personnel-wise. Uh, can you hold it together, or can you get better uh, moving forward here? Yeah, I think we can continue to improve. I think the more and more reps that guys get, the better that we get as a unit, um, the more we're going to gel and build that continuity. and. Um, play off of each other, but I mean, everybody's depleted uh, if you look around the league, so there is no self pity. Coming into the year, I know there's a lot of conversation. It's manifesting good results for Baltimore with the offensive coaching change, but uh, did you see it look all that much different to you in the first game, and how do you think it is uh, compared to what you're used to seeing from Baltimore this year? Uh, I think there's some similarities and obviously some differences. I think you don't see 42 moving around as much as he has in the past um, in the, the run game or the pass game. I think they have an effective passing game, uh, but at the end of the day, they're going to want to stick to the run. I think they have like 30 plus games of over 100 yard rushing or something like that. So uh, first and foremost, just like any week is stopping the run. Anything else? Thanks, man. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.